Next Big Star. I'm your host, James Kelly. My co-host is Ninon Duvera Du Rosa. Oh, you're good. Okay. You've got the accent going there, James. James, James. Yeah, and our guest is Dennis Keating. That's correct. All right, thank you, Dennis. Hi, thank you. And you also go by Satchmo. Dennis de Satchmo. Dennis de Satchmo. De Satchmo. And you're going to tell us why. Ten, introduce yourself, Dennis. Well, I'm Dennis de Satchmo Keating, and I'm a Louis Armstrong tribute artist and much, much more. I can sing in my regular voice. I can sing in Louis Armstrong on any voice or any song that he's done in the past. Okay. And any song that's out that I try to learn today, um, I can do my voice and go into Satchmo the next the next word, the next note, the next line, whatever. I no, they, they, they kind of run off your tongue. They kind of, you know, you change, there's no difference. It kind of, boom, 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 boom. Right. You're amazing. Right. People, we're going to hear you. We're going to hear you in a little bit. People, people look at me and, and they look at me on stage and if I go into my voice at the beginning of a song and then change it to Lewis's voice, which is still my voice, but I try to do Lewis, and uh, they look at me, there's like, is he lip syncing? Is there someone else doing that? Um, they're amazed that I can no, do both. No, it's you. No, it's, it's Dennis. Me. It's Dennis. It's me. For a kid that stuttered all the way through his 18th year of high school, oh, uh, wow. or 18 years old, uh, every other word. Oh, were you bullied in that? Oh, yes. I imagine. Yes. I could just and, imagine. What and I was also bullied because I didn't, find, I didn't follow the music that my classmates were growing up with, <laughs> the late 70s. Um, I followed all the big bands, mm. and um, there was a one concert I went to in New York City, and it was three big bands. It was Woody Herman and his Thundering Herd, Buddy Rich and his Killer Force, and Maynard Ferguson and his big band. Across the street, they had Jethro Tull, so I went back to school that Monday, and I'm wearing one of the big band shirts, and all the classmates that went to New York are wearing Jethro Tull shirts. <laughs> so it was difficult for me to speak, let alone get out what I did, and I said, so what instrument does Jethro Tull play? And they looked at me and they says, Jethro Tull's a big, uh, Jethro Tull's a band. It's not a person. <laughs> but it sounded to me like somebody's name. So Yeah, it does sound like a name. So, it does. So it was one of those class. crazy things. Yeah. And uh, since then, I've been blessed with uh, basically doing Louis Armstrong probably from the early 2000s. Early okay. 2000s. How long have you been in the music business? I've been in the music business on and off. Uh, since 1985 okay. is when I moved to Las Vegas and I decided in 2011 to take an early retirement from Clark County. I was the transportation supervisor at McCarran and pursue music. Uh, there was an open chair in a band in California so I went there and did that for a while. Uh, then I had three surgeries so put off trumpet playing for a little bit. I substituted with French horn because my arm was in a sling, so that worked out perfectly. Oh, well, cool. Hang in there. Yeah, yeah. any way you can. <laughs> and then I moved to New York, and I started to do music in New York. And uh, late 2016, my youngest son was living out here, and he had some personal issues, so I came out here to support him, and I haven't left yet. That's amazing. You know what I love about what you just said, Dennis, is that you, you actually um, took over your dream. Yeah. You, you let everything slide by, you let our oh, working hard doing this. And you actually did what you really love, and, and look what it's turned into. Correct. I, I you know, I was a one-time retail manager. I worked for a construction company. I did insulation. I was with the company that did the insulation at the Mormon Temple. Okay. Up on so the, you're a Mormon, huh? No, <laughs> no. We were the only non-Mormon non contractor that was able to work, but we couldn't work until they had morning prayer. Yeah. And then I've done... Um, county work and I was also an elected official for the Nye County School Board and I was asked oh, to be do we the, need you now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was asked to be the legislative chairperson for all seventeen Nevada districts, uh, just based off my first year out as school board member of the year for the entire state, which was amazing. Yeah. That's I didn't know there was 17 districts in, in Nevada. That seems like an awful lot. Um, I always think of Nevada being very small. I'm sure it's not. still 17. It might be 16. You know, I'm getting yeah. older, so I might have, might have yeah. added one. Me me memory loss. <laughs> but you have not lost the memory of Louis Armstrong. No, no. He needs to live on and on. And uh, anyone that's basically over the age of two or three has heard... Louis Armstrong before uh, anywhere from a TV commercial to yeah. Uh, yeah. Toy Story to many other movies that are out there to this day and uh, 
Well, we know that Terry Fader does his impersonation of that in his show. Terry does a wonderful job. Yeah, he does. I see cheese and key. I don't know how he does it. I, I can't I can't do what he does. No, you do it better. <laughs> <laughs> I like Terry's though. I like I, know, yes. I like Terry too. He's a great guy actually. Yeah. Well I didn't even I didn't even open my mouth there. I no, tried to do a ventriloquist thing. Oh, because that's what he does. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how he does that either. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't even see him when he just great talent. When are all these talents coming back? Yeah, James? that's what we want to talk a little bit yeah, about. What's talents? it been like for you, Dennis? It's it's been really really slow. I've uh, tried to go around to uh, assisted living facilities and 55 plus communities, and I've even done some performances outside their windows. Uh, if they um, can open a window, if they can get wheeled to the window, or if they're just staying in bed, uh, I know they're there, um, and that entertainment gives me back so much more uh, especially during these difficult times and the COVID and all that other stuff well, especially uh, the older the seniors I mean they've they had it really really bad because no one can come back even their own family can't even come back close except as you said outside a window correct so correct. when you turn up and you start singing they must be elated huh? it's it's I, I get so much more back and and that's what it is being an entertainer is you're you're gifted in some way or you're learned to be proficient at what you do. And it's all about entertaining, giving back to the community because you get back so much more. Yeah. And I'm blessed 10 times over. And my kids are like, Dad, I can't believe you do that. I says, well, you know, education was important to me, which is our youth and our future and the people that path the way for us. Yeah. How many children do you have? Three grown children. Okay, what do they do? Are they in the music business? Uh, no, but they're all musically talented. Okay. Um, my oldest son now switched careers. He is the head baker chef manager currently at Italy in Manhattan. Okay. And he's going to wow. take over their flagship store and turn that around. And they have corporate plans for him. Uh, my daughter's a wonderful, wonderful young girl who has not been working the last few years. She's raising. Uh, my eight-year-old grand, or soon-to-be eight-year-old granddaughter, and soon-to-be wow. five-year-old grandson, Aww. and um, she'll be getting back into teaching once they relocate from Sitka, Alaska, back to Montana. Oh, okay. And my youngest is one of those computer whizzes, and he helps organize and put together glass conventions that are out here in Las Vegas, and they have one coming up, I think, in May, and uh, it's going to be smaller scale than it used to be. Mm -hmm. And he will be, he will also be moving. He's moving to Michigan. He met a lovely young girl. She's a photographer, videographer, and she also owns a Little Caesars Pizza. And having a house built in Michigan, and will be there. He's moving in July, and the house will be ready in August. Mm -hmm. What a so. great thing for a young couple. Yeah. You know, they've both got great jobs. Oh, they're both going good, and they're building it up together. And How like, cool is and that? And like my dad used to say to all my, all, all his daughter-in-laws is. She's too good for my son, but no, they deserve each other. <laughs> yeah, 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 that always happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're amazing. Right. So, so you've got to be very proud of your children and your family. Yes, yes. So what and, about the wife? And, Is and, there a wife around? Yes, and, and I didn't do it all, all alone. Um, I Now, ex-wife, Julie, she lives in Alaska, and she was the most remarkable mother, and oh. I believe the kids are successful to this day because of us reading when they were inside her womb, when they were born, we read. When they were old enough, we read to them. They read to us. And before you know, they're reading the siblings. And reading is the foundation to success in anything. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a, a huge advocate of that. Well, I have you're an author. I have aspects of writing the radio show. I'm an author. We have one million books in 100 days, which we're getting ready to launch um, April 15th. Great. And that's for self-published authors. to get, And also to get handheld books back into the hands of kids yes. and adults. You know, it's yeah, time that they learn what a book really is instead of just a tablet. Well, and I, and that's know. important. Uh, one of my platforms when I was running for school board was, you know, video games and all that technology are good for hand-eye coordination and many things. Yeah, but but. reading is what we need to get our children involved in. And I didn't care if they read a sign on the side of the road, they read a comic strip, or they read the newspaper. As long as they were reading something. Oh, they were reading something. Absolutely. I just That's had that woman important. on today, Marion, and uh, she wrote a book, Agent Orange. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, oh. Agent Orange, you, you know what that's all about. Absolutely. You know, Vietnam, Vietnam War. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. 
which was, and she's doing very well with it, but she's letting people know, you know, another book coming out that you might like, uh, James. I, yeah, I think uh, I might have her on my show, yes, Aspects of Writing. Yes, yeah, yeah. she's got a fabulous story. Yeah. Great yeah. story. I think everybody might like to read that book, uh, yeah. and maybe that's something we can get into the, you know, the... Um, High schools too. Oh, it would as be great reading. for the high schools. We'll She's see. actually going to be participating in One Million Books in One Hundred Days. Is nice. she? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, she'll be one of the authors on there. Oh, fabulous! Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. a great friend. She's been a good friend of mine for many years. Oh, really? She came in. She came and saw one when I started doing um, Vegas Live with Nina. Uh -huh. She came into my show and just sat there and watched. And they were the two of them, which was her husband. He passed away since. They were sitting there watching, and then one day I said, "You know, sometimes I have people in the audience." Come on the show, and I had them on the show. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Lovely. Well, what is going on with the the artist community right now? I we're in a stage now to where there's like two thirds of the you can have two thirds of attendance, I believe. Yes. I, I'm going to tell you this. I went down to Area 15 here in in Las Vegas yesterday to do some research, and I'd never been there. First of all, it's fantastic. It's unbelievable. But secondly. That place was packed, and I know there's no way that was within the parameters they've set for us. You really? know, although everyone was wearing a mask, I will say that. I don't even think you could enter if you weren't wearing one. But anyway, that place is buzzing like you wouldn't believe. I could hardly find a parking spot, and I'd never been there. I didn't know what it was about. I've never been there. Right? They have a gigantic theater in the back, which is what I was there for. Wow! And uh, and then they have a huge outside arena thing they have as well. We couldn't see that yesterday because of something going on. But the inside is just unbelievable. So anyway, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to give them a plug, but I'm just saying they are hopping. And that's right. why I was thinking, what's going to, you know, how soon do you think we're going to come back? Do you have any news tips for us? Or? No, I wish I had the answer on the Magic 8 Ball or from people out there that are in the know. Yeah, although I am, you know, pretty knowledgeable with what's going on with our government here locally and in the state. Uh, I don't see anything opening up uh, on a large scale for another several months. However, I've noticed the same thing you did, uh, but at other venues where it didn't look like there was 50% or now 75%. They looked pretty well 100% packed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I talked to, I spoke with someone from one of the major casinos this last week um, about the theaters they have there, and they are not opening until the end of the year for sure. Uh, I don't know if it's because, I really don't understand exactly why or what that's about because they could literally have two-thirds occupancy right now. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure if sure. maybe they think it's just not cost effective. The reason I want to bring that up is because, you know, it does affect you and other artists out there, you know, who, uh, we, we know someone jointly who had 20 gigs planned just before COVID hit and lost all of them. Everything. Absolutely. You know, due to that. Well, that's the story to so, most of the entertainment. They lost yeah, it all. Yeah. All of this. And a lady who had three gigs in Los Angeles, and each one fell through. It was yeah. especially Los Angeles. So that's a huge part of the income for that community. That is, well, that is income. the income for that community. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and we're not just talking about you know musicians and musicians and singers. We're talking about performers like for Cirque du Soleil, and I understand some of those shows aren't yeah. coming back. Right, so. and and all the tech people that are involved. And the tech and the people, ushers. we forget about that. Yeah. yeah, and then you've got the servers, and then you've got the managers. You've got yeah. all the bar people. Oh wow, you know we're now we're talking we about it. it really, we're talking it's about hard. probably seventy five percent of our community out here, at mm -hmm. least in Clark County, because we're such a big service related industry. industry. Yeah, yeah, because the hotels and everything. So that's the yeah. end. they're all closed. Well, not all closed now, but they're doing quite well. And Caesars is quite busy. A lot of them are quite busy. Are you going to give us a song? Are we going to have, uh, James, Just a bit. Can, we, can we have a little bit of Just a bit. Do you have a request? Uh, a Wonderful World. Okay. Well, everyone's going to request acapella. that. Acapella. I, I love that one. Acapella. Okay, yeah. I'm going to take out my prop because okay. I can't sing like Lewis unless I have this okay, well, in hey, my hand. There's the spirit. That's got to happen. All right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Sit back and enjoy. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom. For me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. How's that? Fantastic. Thank Amazing. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Dennis, give me an idea of how your career has progressed since you started in the industry, and where you think it's where you want it to go. 
I definitely wanted to go uh, one of two places and maybe two places, why not? First place, I would love to be on a big showroom stage here in Las Vegas or okay. anywhere el else in the world. Um, and I would certainly, I've been considering doing a one man show on the life of Louis Armstrong. Like a play. Like a play. Wow. Why don't you do that? That would be I'm, amazing. I'm still investigating his life and everything about it because I would definitely have to do that in first person. Oh, that would so be fabulous. I think that would be something. You That's know, never done. Let me, I will help you with write that if you want. Okay. Because I've written a couple plays. Sounds great. So I can help you with that. Then oh, I just oh, need to memorize. Then I just need to you know, memorize lines. You know, it's not even so much as much memorizing as long as you know the content. Okay. Because, you know, once you know the content, it's like the shows we do. Some of my shows I script, but I really don't read it verbatim. Okay. No. It's just something to go by. And no. as long as you know how the storyline flows, you know how to tell the story. Yeah. You right. just have to be a storyteller, really. There you go. So yeah. that's Which one way. Which is a beginning, a middle, and, and an, an end. end. That's right. what it is. I mean. uh, a lot of people do memorize verbatim, and you can if you want. But I know. don't. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think being a jazz musician, there'd be a lot of improvisation. Yeah. But that, that well, that's probably, you, though. And that, that was you out, right. so that's cool. And we'd make a different each show, too. So that would be fun, I sure. think. You know, sure. And that, you know, someone comes back to see you again. They're, stay, they're seeing the same thing, but it's still a little different. Right, yes. and, and what uh, got me thinking of that type of venue was when I was living in Pahrump, Nevada, in the summer we used to have Chautauquas, okay. which are um, people portraying historical figures back in time. Oh, okay. And then they have a Q&A after their performance. And the whole idea behind that is they need to answer all their questions that are given to them on the whim in first person. Wow. Really? Yeah, that's like an improvisation that, that we have. There's a big show wow. down in Newport Beach where they have pictures come alive. Oh, wow. Have you ever oh, seen that? No, no I know. I've heard about it, but I've never seen yeah, it. Yeah, that's in Newport Beach, and they yeah. have these Beautiful, big scene of like maybe ten people in this picture, and you see the picture, and you slowly see them. They all come alive, that's and that's something awesome. which is a sort of same as what you're talking about. Yeah, I see. I know what you mean. It's like a silhouette type thing, yes. and they, they come together and they can make different images. They were on America's Got Talent, by the way. I think so. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. you know that is that's incredible what yeah. they do. Yeah, yeah and how they do. See, I I tried to approach uh, here in town. Now they're not doing much either. A legend in the concert. Mm -hmm. oh, they yeah. want a true impersonator. I'm not a per an impersonator because I don't look anything like Lewis. I'm a tribute artist. Yes. So my uh, my spiel or whatever it was to them was have me behind the screen as a silhouette for my first song. Oh, okay. And that for the second good. song for like 30 seconds. And then you raise the screen and then there I am. And Which would be a shock to people. Right. And Because they you obviously are not the same nationality as, right. as he is. So. And, and then once once I finish that second song, I can say hello to the audience in my voice, in and they're going to say, what the heck's going on? And then you start right, right, right. singing a song in your voice. Then I start singing my voice and going into Lewis so they know it's me singing. Right, right, right. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I don't see anything happening with Legends, but uh, cruise ships, when they reopen, that would be a nice, yeah. you know, 45 yeah. minutes. They show. say they're not open until November now. They're not starting up. Well, we're hoping we can get you involved in something I'm doing in the future I for a benefit. Certainly yeah. be yes. available unless I'm <laughs> on tour somewhere. Unfortunately, you'll be available because of what's going on well, in the city. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, there you go. You know, that's the sad thing is, is that we're not going to have a problem getting entertainers because no. there's so many out there. And everybody's right. willing to come out and oh, do yeah. anything for nothing. Absolutely. They don't mind. Yeah. Right. Just to be out there. Well, and to help with what we're doing. And to help with different we're doing. causes. Yeah. Absolutely. For the yeah. cause, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause is important. Yeah. Yes. And I find out you know a lot of people I know through the grapevine. Wow. Yeah. I hope so. So it is a small town. You know, Vegas is two and a half million people. But in reality, this is a very small, very small town. network of people yeah. here. And when I moved here, there were like 250,000 people. Yeah, because I left in 1985 and came back in 1996. Oh, yeah, so yeah. we were at least a million and a half. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So when I left, it was a when quarter When you left, they all came in. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> or maybe they followed me back like, from well, Atlanta. Back. Well, yeah. you know, I, I must have followed you back because I came back in 2016. The story about my son didn't exist, you know. Yeah. I, I heard you were back in town. So. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Mac is back in town. Oh, yeah. He's back in town. Let's go with him. <laughs> no, you know, Vegas is interesting because I know when I left, I thought, oh, I'll never go back to Las Vegas. But there's something that draws you here. Oh. I don't even know how to explain it. but you know. definitely is because when you go away, even for a weekend, I can't wait to get back. Yeah. I think it's a 24-hour day lifestyle. Whether you do it or whether you don't is there. Just knowing you can. Just, yes. I can get up at you 3 know. o'clock and do whatever I want to do. Go have, yeah. Go meet with friends, go have a drink, yes. go have breakfast, Absolutely. go have dinner, whatever it is you yeah. want. So, yeah. But, you know, Vegas has always been an interesting city. I, how long have you been here now, Nina? Oh, I moved to, well, I've been coming back and forth since the, um, since the 80s, actually. Okay. But I moved here in uh, 2012. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm due. I'm a new one. All right. Yeah, I originally moved here in 1978. Yeah. You know, I was just a baby. I got married here. I, I was a baby. Wow. I was married. <laughs> I got married here. 9979. Nine, <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, I, I moved here in 78, and it was a very interesting community at that time because we didn't... People actually thought we lived in the hotels. The tourists thought we lived in the hotels. They'd say, so where do you live? Which hotel? Which hotel like, do you live in? Uh, I, I actually don't. I, I live in a house. That's funny. But, you know, because um, you didn't see a whole lot of the city back then. You didn't see a lot of people either. No. Like all on the Strip. Right. You used to drive over the mountains from California, and you saw the entire Strip. strip. All the hotels, the big pink yeah. flamingo, yep. you know, the showboat, all those. It was unbelievable. Absolutely. It was really yeah. glamorous. Yeah. So. It's changed a lot. It's still glamorous. It's just more it glamorous. Is. It's more lights and a lot of glamour. Yeah, now you got to be so s- yeah. intimate. You have to be standing in front of the hotel to, yes. to soak in the glamour now or go yeah. inside one of the hotels. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a different city. But it's an open city for the entertainers. Yeah. It and was. It was. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen when it comes back? I, I actually see it reverting a little bit back to the good old days. We used to have a lot of the lounge shows, and a lot of big performers performed in those lounge shows, by the way. So I see a little bit of that coming back to where you're seeing some of the lounge acts come back now. Because you know they're, they're going to slowly reopen and try and reacclimate the tourists back into all of this. I actually think this could turn things around a little bit in Vegas to where you're going to see more lounge acts. They other, say that. Other than just the big shows. You're right. They say that. They yeah. say the lounge shows are coming back, and I think that would be beautiful. Oh, absolutely. You would be a great lounge show. And Thank you. And, and, and that's what Vegas was when I came out here. It was all about the lounge shows. Right. And um, vintage Vegas. Mm-hmm. And it would be nice to see vintage Vegas come back as Zoe Bowie calls me vintage Vegas, which is nice. But I'd like to see him come back. Well, you Zoe know, Bowie is an incredible oh, performer. Absolutely, but he's like a, he's like a showroom little, you know. Right, right. He needs to come back, hit that heavy, and, and you know, show. why can't we have a Zoe Bowie headliner six nights a week yeah. in this town? Because you know, it's party music, and people enjoy it. I think there's a lot of shows that I would like to see come back um, in this city. We're gonna have to work on that. Yeah, I, I think see so, what we too. can do. Sniff. But, we all love the shows still. Mm-hmm. We like we haven't even though we live here, we haven't got bored with them. We love to, we still love the shows. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely! Right. And you know what? I love the performers who aren't in the stratosphere, where you have to pay two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars for a ticket. Oh yeah, that's ridiculous. I, I, because to be honest with you, they're every bit as good as those that have reached mm-hmm. the stratosphere level. Yes. Um, it's just that they haven't had the same exposure. I don't know what what the, the deal is really, but. But I really do believe that there are so many talented people oh, the out talent there in that Vegas are just undiscovered. And I think sometimes that's what happens, Neon, is that these people get discovered, then they're now they're demanding the, the gigantic salaries. I, I know one hotel where they brought in um, a play, a beautiful play, musical, but they, they overextended themselves on what it cost to put on that, that performance. And it lasted several years, but eventually went to the wayside, and the real reason was is it wasn't making money. Not that it wasn't fantastic. It was a fantastic show. But the price of the ticket. But the price of the tickets Too much. couldn't keep up with what it cost to produce the show. Yeah. With the costumes, the, the layout for the show itself, the entertainers. And, and I think that's what happened. So I think we need to start going backwards so, again. Back, Bring it back to where we have more of the lounge acting. True entertainment. 
that you can walk in there and you can just sit down, have a drink, and you don't have to say two hours. You don't have to. You you can just stay there as long as you want and just have a couple of drinks and leave and go to another show. I think that right. used to be fabulous. Yeah. And oh, it was uh, Sam Butera and the Wildest. You know, when I first oh, moved yeah. here, it's like, wow, that's what we need to get back to. And like you said, all the talent that we have currently in town can fill those showrooms, or or you know the bars, lounges, and stuff. And, and put on a great show. It's not going to be uh, very costly for the well, yeah, casino or the corporation. Right. The cost is right. But they need to actually reward the entertainment uh, like they did years ago. Yeah. If you were in a group and you were at a lounge, you made anywhere from 1500 to 3000 a week as a performer. Right. And that could be a horn player in one of the bands. Yeah. And now it's like struggling to make two hundred dollars in a night and all these talented musicians that are out there mainly guitarists and there's plenty of them they have to work you know two three bands to make a well we interviewed living. someone we did but also don't they have this like three wall two wall one wall that the poor people that have to you know that are going to perform have to pay for that well right the time they get paid to go in there and then they've got to pay for the room or the I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. Well, we had one lady on who was a dancer in Folly Shares. Yes. You know, Carlin. Yes. And she was a dancer for years. And when she started out, she was making five, six hundred dollars a day. When she left the industry, she was making sixty to eighty a day. Yeah. So you would think that it would you wouldn't be making more, but it was the opposite of that. It was actually total opposite. Total opposite. It's completely opposite uh, nowadays. So um, maybe this will change it. Maybe with what's going on and what's happened, maybe this will all change. Well, you know what? Maybe you wouldn't necessarily need have to change for the money, as long as everybody's making a decent living and doing yeah. what they enjoy doing. Right. And I think it, that's where you have to find a happy medium, because you have to make sure that you've got it to where the hotels can afford you, sustain and keeping you. Put on a great show, and and not worry about oh my god now we have to make two million dollars tonight off of sales because we we have this huge entertainer to pay for. Right. Not that there's anything wrong with that if they can get it. I'm not saying that. Sure. I'm just saying that it would be nice to see us go back to the old Vegas where you could okay. really and truly enjoy a show for you know not a, an arm and a leg. Right. But they also have a two drink minimum. You know the drinks are like eighteen twenty dollars a drink. Oh, outrageous. You know that's just one person. That's that's forty dollars right there, and it's. Yeah. It becomes, but I think things will change. I do. I do. And um, we're, I think we're all looking for And the, as, uh, as negative as COVID has been, there are some good things coming out of this. And I think oh, that might be one of the great things coming out I of this. I see a lot of good so, things. Yeah. A lot of good things. I was working for a smaller venue here in town. And I was did some of my show and also hosted karaoke for four hours. And um, I had a great following we brought in. And they were making between twelve and 1400 in four hours, which wow. is something they weren't making in a day sometimes. So they were very appreciative. And I thanked all my followers that came out that participated and had a great time. And that was a great venue. Uh, I got called one o'clock in the afternoon on the 17th and asked if I was gonna perform that night. I said, absolutely. I get five minutes away from the venue and they said, well, we decided not to open. Aww. So I had to go get my equipment anyway, but I had two weddings set up, one for Saturday, one for Sunday, for good friends, and those had to get canceled as well because they were in other establishments in town. So we don't think of that, do we? All no. these weddings and all these different things that you're getting paid for, and then at the last minute you're canceled out. So and we're talking about wedding. shows on the strip, and here, this is not just the shows on the you're strip. You're talking this about weddings. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's all over the community. There are some opening up, but not enough to keep everyone that's out of work no. to... Yeah. Um, to Keep be going. comfortable. So the next time when Vegas opens up, we're gonna try and get you. We gotta get you in a showroom. Someone's gotta get you in a showroom somewhere, so we can. I'm all game. We'll work on and it. then we're gonna talk. We're gonna have you back on the show and talk about the next level. There you go. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Sounds good. Maybe Sounds I'll good. have to bring a portable unit and start doing shows at the Las Vegas sign or something to <laughs> to let people know. You know, got a captive audience. But actually, that's not photos. a bad idea. So. Let them know that Louis is back. Louis back. That's right. Louis back. I did go out there and donate taps. Uh, they had uh, taps across the nation mm -hmm. at a certain time, and I went out there on Memorial Day and did that. And there was a flag off in the distance, which was perfect, and there were probably 18 uh, bikers that were there on motorcycles and they all stood up and they all thanked me and they were all veterans and 
It's like, I can't thank you folks enough. Yeah. This uh, is the only way I can give back. Yeah. Thank you for giving me this. Yeah, that's fantastic. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, so Dennis, wonderful. where can we learn about who you are, what you do? I am Where's on the website? Facebook currently, I'm redoing a website. My Facebook is Dennis DeSatchmo. That's D apostrophe S A T C H M O Keating, K E A T I N G. I'm also D Satchmo Las Vegas at Gmail. And you can always contact me on phone. If I don't answer, please leave a message. I will return your call because <laughs> all the calls are extremely important, even if it's just to say hello, because that's important. It's 702 741 9385. Okay. Awesome. Well, Dennis, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah. And Ninon, we can find you on. You can find me on uh, Vegas Live with Ninon. I'm not <laughs> giving my phone number out. Oh, though, come on. But <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Facebook, Instagram, and don't forget to go to YouTube. And YouTube, Vegas Live with Ninon. Don't forget to subscribe. And then you're also on the All Aspects Radio Network. Yes. That's allaspectsradionetwork.com. Yes. You have two shows on that network. Yeah, then I, yes, I have another show called Ninon Speaks. In fact, Dennis yeah. was on the show. So we are in quite, quite a few places. I also have a little antique booth. Well, and yeah, I also do a... real estate. Do you want to know the whole thing? <laughs> Absolutely. That's a whole show in itself. There, there you go. Yeah, we're always we're busy. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dennis, for being on our show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, call in, see what's going on at Quirky Minds Media. That's right. You thank you. Joining Minds Media and James Kelly. Right. Join us next week for another show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank both. you. Thank you, Dennis.